Hi, as you can notice, the board has changed and also has our location. We have moved back to India and right now we are in our beautiful hometown, Nellore. The topic for this presentation is Java strings. At the end of it, you will learn how to handle a bunch of characters in Java, why strings in Java are immutable, and also the character set that's used to represent these characters. Unless you are working on a financial application or an application that deals with a lot of numerical data where we use primitive types like integer, floating point numbers, etc., most of our application data like user IDs, email IDs, etc., are a bunch of characters. Unlike its predecessors like C or C++ where a bunch of characters are represented using character arrays, Java uses java.lang.string class to represent characters a group of characters. There are two ways in which we can create string objects. One, we can directly assign a string literal value to a variable of type string. Two, we can create an instance of the string class and we can pass in the string literal value to the constructor of this string class as a constructor argument. The string class provides us with various methods, various useful methods to name a few, the substring method allows us to create multiple pieces of a given string. The concat method uses us to allows us to concatenate two or more strings together into one single string. The split method takes a delimiter and splits a given uh, string into tokens. So if we have one long string which has commas in between, the split method will separate out these tokens which are separated by commas into a string array. The equals method allows us to compare the values of two strings and it returns a boolean true or false. Strings in Java are immutable, meaning they are not susceptible to change. For example, if we change the value of S from ABC to ABCDE by using the concat method, JVM retains the old value abc in memory but it creates it also creates a new value abcde and points s to the new value if we had another variable s1 which also uses the same abc value the jvm point instead of creating a separate memory space for this abc it points this s1 to the same abc and if we have an S2 with the same value, string value, JVM will again point it to the same memory location. So that makes Java efficient. Another important point to note is every time we pass in string to another method or when we use one of the methods provided by string to manipulate its value, we need to assign it back to the reference variable. Otherwise, the JVM cre keeps creating uh, the new value in memory and our old string might still be pointing to the old value. We use the Unicode character, Java uses Unicode character set to represent each of these characters. Unicode character set uses 2 bytes, 16 bits to represent a character. So it allows us to write internationalized applications as it can represent any character from Chinese to Japanese to my mother tongue which is Telugu. If you are doing a lot of string manipulation like reading a file and then uh, storing it into a string or anything that has to do with a lot of string manipulation then we shouldn't be using the string class but we should use the string buffer or string builder classes which I will be presenting in a, doing in a future presentation. But for now always remember that strings in Java are immutable and the reason for that is memory efficiency. The JVM creates a string constant pool and every time you create the string object using any of these two ways here, it creates that uh, string literal value and if any other new string uses the same string literal value, it po just points it to the same value in memory. Every time you manipulate or change a value of a string, the JVM creates a new string literal memory space within this string constant pool. And in Java, we use the Unicode, Java uses Unicode character step, which uses two bytes to represent a character, which allows us to pretty much 
represent any international, any character from any international language. In the next presentation, I will present the string builder and string buffer. Until then, keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.